some of the House races that could actually determine the balance of power in the United States. And Zabriel Oslovsky and Sarah Sadwani, we're going to talk about the 27th district first. That is Representative Mike Garcia versus mm -hmm. George Whitesides. This was a district in 2020 that uh, Joe Biden won. And Mark Gar Mike Garcia did win and win again in 22. And according to, I think, the, the late, latest numbers we have, Mike Garcia seems to be ahead right now. Oh, I mean, very, very, slim, you know, brief. Look, that's a very, margin. very slim margin. So what, what, what does that tell you? This was always going to be a really tight race. Um, you know, given redistricting, this, this district changed quite a lot. It used to have Simi Valley in it, which made it a more conservative district. Uh, it, the, the, that district now runs along the LA County border line. Um, and as you noted, right, in 2020, this district did go to Biden. Uh, so Democrats have always seen this, this district as an opportunity for them to pick up. However, if you think about the Antelope Valley that's in there, um, there's a lot of, Latinos, a lot of African Americans, mm -hmm. a lot of working class folks, many many with military backgrounds. Mike Garcia connects with many of those folks, um, even though they may actually be registered as Democrats or have some proclivities that way. Um, he's able to connect with them on a one-to-one -one basis because of his background in the military as a pilot, his Latino roots. Um, that plays a big role in a district like that. That's true, son of immigrants. Mm -hmm. Well, Deb, you want to move on to the forty? First district that has to do with uh, well the high E, and you've got a, a challenger there, Will Rollins, oh, challenging, what Ken Calvert, who has held that post for what for quite um, a while. over 32 30, years, 30 years, yeah. Yeah. and <laughs> describes himself as a MAGA Republican. And uh, I'm not sure if we have any numbers in on that right now, but here we go. We do as soon as I say that. Okay. Oh well, Will Rollins is ahead um, by a slim margin as well, and Calvert beat Rollins before, a couple of years ago. Right. So right. what is this telling you so far, Zeb, about those numbers? Well, look, it's the Coachella, Coachella Valley and parts of uh, other parts of Riverside County. And I think part, part you drew the, the I lines. I did, yeah. It includes uh, Palm uh, Springs part, now, part, yeah. Palm Springs and, yeah. and uh, rivers, parts mm -hmm. of Riverside. So uh, I think he's ahead, uh, and that's, you know, he was behind a little while ago. Right. And, We'll see how it goes through the night. I mean, th this is a very important race, as is the Garcia race, as all of the, these close races, because it may determine whether the House of Representatives is controlled by the Democrats or the Republicans. And in as much as it looks like the Republicans are going to control the Senate and the White House, uh, in terms of accountability and checks and balances, this is the last chance. So the, each one of these races. Uh, can can have an impact on those uh, on the ultimate who, who the next speaker is going to be whether it'll be a Democrat or a Republican. No wonder there's been so much money spent on these oh, races. That's right, right, mm -hmm. quite a bit. Okay, yeah. we have one more to talk about too in California. That would be the 47th district, and that uh, that's Orange County, sure. Huntington Beach, Costa Mesa, Laguna Beach, and Republican Scott Baugh, Democrat Dave Min, are battling head to head. And of course, this is a, a district that Katie Porter gave up yeah. when she ran for the U.S. Senate. So now looking at these numbers, guys, 55% for Dave Men and 44% for Scott Bob. This is a stunning, stunning numbers at this point in time. Certainly, we still have about 50% of the vote to, to be counted. Um, Katie Porter only won this district by a slim margin mm -hmm. uh, two years before. So I think the, the anticipation was that th this was going to be a, a very tight race. So to see Dave Min having this kind of a, a lead at this stage is a good sign for him, for sure. Uh, now, this district, of course, includes Irvine. There's a large Asian American population down there, and many have thought that the Asian American community might really be mobilized by Dave Min's candidacy in ways that they perhaps hadn't been before. Katie Porter, of course, over the last several years, has shifted this district. She was able to be a, to, to really bring in people to uh, support a Democrat in this otherwise uh, this area that it previously had been quite Republican. I was going to say, have the numbers changed in terms of registration for Democrats versus Republicans? Not that I'm aware of, per se, uh, but particularly in the Asian American community, you actually find high rates of APIs uh, that register as independent or with no party preference. Um, so oftentimes those are, are seen as, as votes that, that candidates can really go after. And my guess is Dave Min was probably going after those API votes and getting them. 
All right. And we know Scott Baugh has had, had some yeah. trouble. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> both, <laughs> both have. <laughs> well, Sarah yeah. and Zev, thank you so much for your insight. We're going to check back in with you in uh, just a little bit. But right now, Juan, over to you.